man, I love it, brother. Thank you, man. Friends, this is Colin Hill. If you don't know him, you're gonna, by the end of this show, an uh, amazing fingerstyle guitar player here in Nashville, Tennessee. Colin, thank you so much for, be, for being here today, thank man. You for having amazing me, man. performance. Thank you. Uh, he's gonna be performing a few songs for us today, actually, uh, three tunes. So that was the first one, and um, today we're going to be talking about how to become a fingerstyle guitarist faster than you think, because this guy has been playing for five years, is that right? Uh, yeah, taking, taking it seriously. Like, yeah. I, I had a guitar before that, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, probably three or four years before that, yeah. but I only picked it up just to noodle, Yeah. and uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, mm -hmm. and I learned one intro yeah. here or there of a yeah. song that I liked, and yeah. that was it. And, yeah, so when I turned about 16, that's when I was like, I, I ran across a couple of good guitarists, and mm -hmm. that's just what kind of sparked that. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Lots of lots of heart in your playing. Uh, so we're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff today. And by the way, I love to have uh, great guitar players like you on, especially when you haven't been playing for for very long, comparatively to someone. I mean, someone sees you play like that, they're going to think good at least 10, 20 years, and it's amazing that you've compressed that amount of time. So um, I like for my viewers to see that too because I'm telling them all the time the only thing that's keeping them from being whatever it is they want to be. Some folks don't mm -hmm. want to excel that much, right? They just want to be mm -hmm. a certain amount, but then some folks really want to want to hit it and I say the only thing that's stopping you is, is you and, and, yeah. and really just digging in and, and taking to the instrument and spending the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, so this is the deal, my friends. Uh, let's get to the 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 bits and pieces here that we always just need to get out of the way and then we're going to get straight to some questions and then Colin's going to play another piece for us midway through the program and then one going out. Now listen, you guys can ask questions from me all day long, right? But take advantage of Colin being here today. He's got a wealth of knowledge. He's an amazing player, super kind guy, and he can show you some stuff, okay? So we're going to be we're going to be hacking him today, right? And talking about how he's able to do what he did like this in a short amount of time, all right? Um, so first off, you're going to see, my friends, a, a post on Instagram and Facebook, and it's going to look something like this. Look at that guy. Good looking dude, right? Uh, what I want you to do is follow, you can do this on Instagram or Facebook or both, it'll give you an opportunity to do both, and uh, give you two opportunities to win. So what you're going to do is you are going to uh, like, you're going to leave a comment, and then also make sure that you're following either on Facebook or Instagram, and you can do both as well. We're also going to have some links for you today. In fact, we'll go ahead and put them up now. Oh, and by the way, lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365. Okay, there you go. There's Colin's uh, everything. That's where you're going to we're going to find him, his website, and you can find uh, Instagram on there, Spotify, iTunes, etc. And here are some other bits and pieces as well. So Instagram and and Facebook, Colin Hill Guitar. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll post that a few times in case you guys miss it, but uh, we're kick officially kicking off uh, March 26th Guitar Show with Colin Hill. Yeah, here we go. Um, all right, so, and we're gonna be getting to questions, I guess, on, we're gonna go on Facebook first, okay? So, Colin, before, uh, before we take some questions from the folks here, let me ask you what, uh, what your when you first took to guitar, like what did the day look like for you? Were, were you practicing? Were you getting a good solid half hour of practice in every day, mm -hmm. or what did it look like yeah. for you? Um, well, it's funny. I mean, back then I didn't really know that I was gonna do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so I would say when I was sixteen, I, I kind of just did it because I loved to do it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it kind of depended. If I had a ton of time, I would probably spend. Uh, two to three hours, you know, mm -hmm. trying to do stuff. And stuff took a lot longer back then than it does now. You know, so this wasn't like, just happening in the beginning, no? Well, I mean, um, well, I was going to say one of the biggest influences that kind of got me wanting to play guitar was Jack Pearson. Okay. Um, and he's played with the Allman Brothers, um, and he plays in Nashville a lot. He's mm -hmm. just a fantastic guitarist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw a video of him with Steve Krenz uh, mm -hmm. playing, just jamming on a blues, right. and his buttery style and his phrasing and his mm -hmm. no choice is just amazing yes so that's what just kind of turned me on and so i was i would try and learn something from him just a lick mm -hmm. every day and back when i 
didn't even, you know, where I was super uncomfortable just holding a pick and, mm -hmm. and holding a guitar and, and stuff like that. That would take a long time. Did you start off on electric? I actually did, yeah, mm -hmm. because he played blues, you know. Right. And so I had a little, and well, I still have the, you know, Strat and mm -hmm. Squire Strat. I have more yeah. electri electrics than acoustics. I'm not okay. sure why. <laughs> I right. like it, though. I like playing that. Yeah. Um, and um, anyway, so I just learned licks, you know, uh, even if it was just like... Mm -hmm. As simple, and I figured out, you know, later on that that's out out of a chord, you know, structure it came right. right out of a chord. Right. And back when I first started, that took me an hour, you yeah. know, to figure out. And then I'd rewind, I'd slow it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. That took forever just to do that. And mm -hmm. as time goes on, I mean, it gets easier to learn. Yes. You know, I could hear somebody play that and be like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but there's still really hard licks that I have to spend an hour on now, you mm -hmm. know, still or yeah. songs or stuff right. like that. Um, so. Um, progress was slow, but mm -hmm. like, um, there was still, you know, I still spent a couple hours at least yeah. on it a day. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So do you think that that would be, is that an average, a good average for you two, two, three hours a day, you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to get four, but mm -hmm. it, you know, it depends on the day and mm -hmm. what's going on, Yeah, you know, and if I have other things going on. Yeah. It's really interesting because... We're constantly talking about practice and hacking your practice and how to, you know, since everybody is has the same 24 hours in the yeah. day and got yeah. stuff to do and what have you, like, most of us can't practice eight, you know, 10, 12 yeah. hours a day like <laughs> Zach Wilde did growing up or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so you say, well, then what do you need to practice when, when, you're, when you mm -hmm. are practicing? Mm -hmm. And my thing is, I'm always like exactly what you said there's like a nugget there's like yeah you know there's a piece of gold under the under the sand or the dirt and you're and you're digging for it and there it's always there mm -hmm. but you may have it maybe it's typically deeper than you think it is but there's always gold there there's always if you yeah. keep going if you keep going and that's how I try to do all my practices now for years I mean heck decades uh, mm -hmm. I have practice you know wrote scales and chords and stuff like that and that's good you need to build that yeah. vocabulary and what have you it's not like it was wasted time but uh, now the way that I practice is more like okay I'm going to learn this song or I'm going to learn this solo and I hyper focus on that particular yeah. thing it sounds like yeah. that's kind of what you're doing it's, there it's true and also you have to have a goal mm -hmm. like you have to yes. have a goal and being like for me I want to play like Jack Pearson. That's mm -hmm. a good goal. Yeah. But I have to narrow that down. That's too much. If I just focus on that, I'm never going to get there. Beautiful. What I have to do is be like, okay, I found a video where he took an eight-minute solo mm -hmm. with the Allman Brothers back mm -hmm. in 1997. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to learn the first two minutes of that solo today. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to learn the next two minutes of that solo tomorrow. Yeah. And then the day after. And then I'm going to practice mm -hmm. it for the next week. And then I'm going to be able to play it to the video. Yeah. And then I'm going to be able to grab my looper loop the chords and then play it to the looper yeah and then i'm going to be able to cut it all off and play the solo just like that myself yeah. then i'm going to look at the chords and underneath and why he played what he played mm -hmm. so i had a small goal inside the big goal you yeah. know what i mean i think that's important because if you don't if you don't have yeah. that you can't track your progress too mm -hmm. because you can't say okay two weeks ago i couldn't play that solo yeah. now i'm playing like jack pearson because i am Beautiful. playing a jack pearson solo. exactly you know um and if you do that over and over and over and over and over again. Eventually, you, especially with different artists and stuff, you'll come up with your own stuff. Yeah. And you'll have muscle memory. Yep. Like you won't have to just, you know, think scales. Yeah. You won't have to think. Um, you'll be able to hear something and be able to put yeah. it on the instrument. And that takes a lifetime. I mean, to be honest. Yep. Um, it's, it's not... It's never done. Know, it's never done. Yeah, but it's fun. Right. It's super fun. <laughs> and, it's a, and it's a process, you know. Yeah. A, a learning process. And the best of the best, um, that you know... Uh, older guys that have played their whole lives that mm -hmm. are incredible. Um, it seems to me like this is just an extension of their voice yeah. and of their of their body. Whatever they hear, they can make come out Indeed. on a, on the spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and they might they might say different, and they might be well. Well, I practice that, you know. Yeah. Um, but they've spent so much time there that they yeah. just they're so familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I'm glad that you mentioned the, the big goal and the little goals. Cause we actually talked about this at a live broadcast last night with the, with the folks inside my course and, um, and, and this weekend I was talking about it similarly is that you got to have that big goal, whatever it is. And it can be as lofty as you want, yeah. but if you don't, if you're not knocking out the little goals up to it, but then you're just a dreamer 
which Absolute, the yeah. so society seems to be, oh, you're a dreamer, that's great. But like a dreamer with, who's willing to put in hard work is yeah. so much cooler than just someone <laughs> who dreams. I can dream all day long, right? But the fact that you're doing those mini goals up to it mm -hmm. is, is great. And, you know, you take, okay, I want to be like Jack Pearson. Well, that means I need to learn. And I mean, ob obviously you have other goals in that. But if that's your your immediate goal, that's totally yeah, fine. Yeah. And then you have certain songs that you might learn. And then under those songs, you have certain sections of those songs. And yeah. under those sections, you have like a solo. And then you yeah. have measures. And then you have half a measures and licks and mm -hmm. notes. You and, know? It, and it all applies to other stuff. So yeah. like those measures and those licks, let's just say it's a blues, for goodness yeah. sakes. I mean, that yeah. applies to everything. You yeah. know what I mean? Jazz mm -hmm. blues, country blues. Mm -hmm. You play a rock song, you can use some of the same licks. Yes. That muscle mem memory is going to be built in. Yeah. You know, so the more songs you learn, the more comfortable you're going to be over everything, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. um, over time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. And so when you're playing, so you have some originals and one of them, yeah. one or two, you're going to share with us today, right? Yeah. 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 And so uh, when you're writing, are you primarily using your ear? Are you doing using shapes? Uh, what's your... Um, What's your knowledge of theory, mm -hmm. you know? I, I know you, you studied some violin, right? Yeah, so you yeah. you had to read music. Yeah, my mom taught me violin growing up, mm -hmm. and so I, I kind of learned how to read. I can read music, but mm -hmm. not fast, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mostly learn by ear, which I think is a good thing, because mm -hmm. you can, you can, um, you're able to pick out things, you know, by ear. And I, yeah. I think that's important, so that yes. you can, um, if you hear something in your head, you can bring it out, you know? Yeah. But the other side is also nice to have, is to be able to read music and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but as far as theory goes and for, for songwriting, um, I think it's really important to know how music works mm -hmm. and then to forget about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of the big ticket things for me as far as understanding the guitar neck mm -hmm. and not being lost up here, which mm -hmm. is which was a big thing for me. It's yeah. like, um, I did learn the notes, mm -hmm. you know, so you take a string and you E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. you just do that a ton, ton of times. And right. this top string is the same as that, so yep. that's, that's easy. You get two, two down already, mm -hmm. then you do that with the next string. Yep. And then you try and do it this ways. So instead of thinking this ways, you think this way. So you go mm -hmm. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, instead yeah. of going E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps. Yeah. And then learning the, the sharps and the flats in between. Mm -hmm learning the, the, the keys and the, the scales. It's not that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think, when you actually get down to it, it's you only can, 12 notes. It's only 12 <laughs> notes, yeah. And there, there's not that many keys, and you, yeah. can, you can memorize the, the sharps and the flats and stuff like that. Just mm -hmm. give yourself a month. Yeah. Give yourself a diagram. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a schedule. Yeah. And don't think of it as torture. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like, this isn't guitar playing. I yeah. just want to play, you know, yeah. licks and stuff. Yeah. Well, right. um, if you, you know, it helps to be able to know this stuff, especially to play with a band or to, yeah. or to write a song yes. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, one of the, I guess, big ticket items, like I was saying, um, was the harmonized major scale, mm -hmm. which is basically just taking a major scale and putting chords with it. And I'm sure you've, you've gone over mm -hmm. all of this, but like in the key of C, it's like you have a C major chord, mm -hmm. then you have a D minor, an E minor, F major, G major, A minor, mm -hmm. B half diminished, mm -hmm. which doesn't get used too much, but it's yeah. very similar to the five chord. Yeah. And then back to the one. Um, that is really, really helpful because it, yeah. it shows you where all of the C's are on the neck, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you, you're playing a song that's got a C right there, well, I could play it right mm -hmm. there and that's a different sound. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm in jazz, I can play it right there. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That sort of thing. Well, where's my D minors? Or, uh, no. There's a D minor right yeah. there, right? There's a G right there. Yeah. And and this is because of the harmonized major scale. I know my, my G's are right here. Um, and uh, being able to see it in chord structures, I know that's that's like super brief and like mm -hmm. just surface, like yeah, you no. could actually get into that. Um, I'd say that's the number one thing yeah. that I tell folks is uh, learn the number system and just learn, yeah. okay, one through seven. And right. here are the chords, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. And yes. you can learn the seventh version, the seventh chord versions of it. And now all of a sudden, mm -hmm. 90 seven percent of everything you experience is going to fit into that form exactly you know? yeah yeah and even mm. the stuff that doesn't fit into that form you can you can relate it to a different key where it yes. does fit in that form. yes where yeah. that i mean like it's tricky or i'm not or whatever yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i'm not that good at all of that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff but um it really helps though to know what you're working with you know mm -hmm. what i mean in a key yes um, and to know where your chords are so like um in, in the key of a it's good to know there's my there's my one there's my two there's my five, 
There's my one. In the key of D. Two, five, one. You know what I mean? Yeah, G, that's great. Two, five, one. Wherever you are, you don't have to think about it. That's yes. that's the way you kind of want it to be able yeah. to happen. That's great. But yeah, I'm still killer. I'm still working on that. Too, oh man, it's forever, right? Yeah, it's, it's forever. Like I say it all it's the forever. time. I'm I'm constantly learning new stuff uh, on the guitar, and I always will be. It's like that's right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. If you're, if you're doing your job, you're constantly learning something. That's true. You know? That's so, true. <laughs> all right, great stuff. Well, um, you mind if we take some questions? Oh, from, absolutely. From, let's uh, absolutely. let's dig in here. In fact, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to YouTube first. And uh, friends, if you would for these broadcasts, since we have so many folks on here, if you can put in all caps and then the question mark, that's helpful. At least put a question mark, okay? But if you can do all caps and a question mark, that helps me to uh, to see. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. And, uh, okay. So even while trying basic patterns, I can't seem to focus on the chord hand and picking hands simultaneously and thus mm -hmm. miss some strings, uh, and some, and, or pick some other strings. Any suggestions? And yeah, some of these, yeah. if you, if you're like, I'm not, I don't understand, or, or, or if you want to answer, if you, if you want to answer that one, you just let me know. Oh, Cause yeah. sometimes, you know, uh, the question may not be posed the right way or whatever, no, yeah. but yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and I assume, I assume you're talking about. Um, Thank you for the donation. We got a, got a, got a donation there, Zach. Uh, and we'll, and Zach, since we're smack in the middle of a question, we're going to get to yours next. But thank you so much for the donation. That these uh, kids donate money, and we can we can grab lunch afterwards. So <laughs> so let's let's get to this one since we just started that one, and then we'll get to Zach's yeah. right away. So um, I assume you're talking kind of about uh, finger picking patterns, or if you're using a pick and you're trying to. If you're using a pick or if you're using your fingers and you can't focus on this and this at the same time well for me uh, the best way would be either to forget this hand and just go over here and do whatever pattern you were wanting to do and it's gonna be super slow at first so just do that as slow as you need to for the next 10 minutes and then okay let's put a C chord down and don't don't focus on switching chords, just make sure that your right hand can do what it needs to do. So I would just say practice them separately if you mm -hmm. can't get them to happen together. Then once you're, you're comfortable enough kind of doing that and that's, and that's still, you, you can kind of get to some speed on that, I guess. Um, map out your chord progression, map out your finger picking pattern and do it as slow as you need to, to do it right. Even, so let's just say my pattern is uh, that sort of thing right there. Do it as slow as you need to if that's... Mm -hmm. if, if it's that slow or even slower, that's fine as long as you're playing it right. Because if you're playing it right, you can speed that up. Truth. That's all yeah. truth right there. If man. you're playing it fast and wrong that I mean you know what can you do with that you know it doesn't count it doesn't count yeah you just play it slow and play it right and if you can do that you can speed it up slowly. yeah and that's uh, this next question from Zach thanks for the donation Zach assuming no musical background how do you play uh, to tempo it's basically the same same thing that Colin's saying here uh, with no musical background uh, it's like saying if I don't lift weights, how do I bench 450? You ain't bench. You ain't benching 450. You're just not doing it. So, um, you know, no pain, no gain. So if you're not doing the the if you're not doing the work, you're not going to get there. So there is no playing to tempo. Uh, chances are of anything that you're doing if you're not doing the work up to it. So sure. you just have to build up to it. Sure. Yeah. Um, and like. And people feel music differently. Like I, I talk to drummers, and drummers, you know, some of them feel like they sit on the the back side of things, mm -hmm. and they're not pushing. Some other the drummers, back side of the beat. So if this yeah. is the beat. You know, there's, he's saying like kind of behind the beat a little bit, or slower than the beat. So yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. let's just say we put a metronome on. The metronome's perfect. Mm -hmm. So it's the one thing that's not gonna screw up. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, a drummer that might sit behind it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's where he feels he sits. Other drummers kind of push ahead yeah. of it, you know, and that's that's fine, you know. I mean, that's the way people feel beats, mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna do that whether we know it or not with guitar. Even mm -hmm. though guitar is not a rhythm instrument, mm -hmm. everything we play should be 
and time and rhythm, mm-hmm. especially like with solo guitar. Like I, yeah. I practice with a metronome all the time. But um, yeah, so with no musical background, being able to play with the tempo, I mean, we feel it. You know, we're going to have to feel it inside. Um, but practice with a metronome. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Practice with a metronome and uh, uh, do it slow. Like mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're working up like picking speed or something like that, yeah. um, then obviously do it slow. Yeah. But, uh, and listen to music and just copy guitarists. Yeah. You know, if you're like, well, what strumming pattern do I play over that specific tempo? Yes. You know, we'll see what they're doing. See if you can copy what they're doing. Um, and once again, going back to the first question, that could take an hour. You know. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. That's great stuff. Ryan, thank you so much for the donation. Uh, thank you for UGS and 365. Awesome guests. Enjoy lunch, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. Super cool, Ryan. Uh, and I think Ryan was the one who was on the broadcast last night and, and had mentioned you. I'm pretty sure. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, great. That's good. You, you, I can tell. I can tell that you... That's why Colin is so good, because he's not, he's not afraid of doing the work, but we're pretty much all the same when it comes to work. There's some, of, some, some folks will, are willing to put in more work than others, but it's a big mental thing. And if you can get beyond that mental mm-hmm. thing, if you get beyond the psychology to just understand that you're not going to be Tommy Emmanuel overnight. Yeah. Tommy Emmanuel wasn't Tommy <laughs> Emmanuel overnight, and he's, not, and he's practicing right now as we speak to become the guitar player that he wants to be. He's not there yet. And if you're wise, you'll always be striving for right. that. That's you're right. always going for that. Yeah. Bit, you know? I mean, think about if, you, if you've if you already made it and you're satisfied. Yeah, boring. You know, boring, yeah. yeah. You gotta, what do you do now? Yeah, there should always be something you want to be able to do or to learn and grow on your instrument. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just stop. There's a, lots of, there's a lot of behind the musics um, programs about people that did that where they reached the top and then, and then they didn't. <laughs> you know, they, they started doing drugs and, and mm-hmm. everything else because they just weren't satisfied because they, they weren't digging in as a musician. They forgot that that's why they initially came to music and now it's girls and drugs mm-hmm. and fame and everything else when really it's like it ha- it's all to do with the music. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, good. Great stuff. Uh, well, let's see here. How do you incorporate moving bass line and create melody lines? I don't know that yet. Yeah, that's a good question. And to be honest, uh, I'm I'm still working on that as far as creating bass lines. I, I know that bass lines come out of you can bring them out of chords. And if you if you listen to bass players, you know mm-hmm. if the, if they're playing like a, let's say a one six two five in right. the key of C, they're gonna play. And it, let's say it's a walking bass, they're gonna play. A, that sort of thing right yeah. there. Um, now. The, why a bass line comes into play as far as the theory side of it um, there's, a, there's a lot that can be talked about I, I would, you know, like the harmonized major scale mm-hmm. knowing your chords and I think they may mean, um, they may mean more calisthenically sure. like what you're doing like okay, how, sure, yeah. I think that's what they're probably yeah. saying yeah, um, well it's hard to get independence in between your, your, your thumb and your fingers um, so uh, a good example I guess is Tommy Emanuel's uh, Blue Moon the way mm-hmm. he plays Blue Moon mm-hmm. he'll play a bass line like that it's a one, six, two, five, and C. Right. And then play. That sort yeah. of thing. And there's there's some other notes in between that. But the way that you would get to where you can do this with your hand is learn the bass line. Okay. Super slow. Right? Okay. Yeah. And then see if you can put the melody over the top of this. Now this is hard. I mean, you want to start with, with um, easy songs at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, good songs are Windy and Warm uh, mm-hmm. that Chet Atkins did. Yeah. Um, Freight Train is another uh, fairly good one to start with to mm-hmm. get the independence from the thumb and your fingers. Um, but you just take it really slow. Yeah. Like you can hear, okay, the melody comes right before the note. So you go, uh, okay, then the first bass note hits. Okay. Do that again. You know? Yeah. Do you, now the, loop, do you loop stuff that often like that, like ba da da goom, ba da da goom? Do you do uh, that? Do you try to loop, or do you just? I like, don't usually use the looper just for, for the. Practice. No, I mean loop within your head, like try oh, to yeah. do, try to keep it uh, like one measure or a half measure. <sighs> yeah, like, perfect. I, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. As far as like, um, just get like a ten second spot in the song down yes. before you move to the next yeah. section. Yeah. So like in that case, it's melody, melody, bass, bass. 
bass, then another melody, then another bass. Yeah. And then see if you can get that to feel the way that Tommy makes it feel. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do and it's gonna be slower than that. Obviously, yeah. the process is like, is painful. Yeah. It's like you know rubbing your yeah. tongue and patting your head and then switching. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's the way to do it. Just take yeah. it really, really slow. And with different songs, it's going to be, you know, it'll get easier too um, yeah. to be able to hear things and your, your fingers will know what to do yeah. as time goes on. Yeah, you know? that's that's great advice. Yeah, you know, I always compare it to juggling balls. And yeah. if you're juggling f four balls and you can't do that, you got to put one down. In this case here, it's maybe just two. You're getting a bass line. Yeah. You're, you've got a melody line. Well, you really need to learn the melody line separately, the bass separately, yeah. the finger picking separately. And then if you are going to put them together, just like you would the first time you're grabbing, you know, if you can juggle two balls, but you can't juggle three, the first time you grab three, you're going to have to throw those balls way up in the air. It needs to be nice and slow. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to. It's going to be too much yeah. for you. Um, yeah. And that's the way everybody, since the beginning of time, has done it. They're really, that's it. <laughs> there is no other way other than, <laughs> I don't I don't know of any other way you would do it. You'd, gotta, you'd have to break it down. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. great stuff. Okay, uh, what guitarists inspire you? Oh, man. Um, Tommy Emanuel <laughs> inspires me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh Emil Ehrenbro, he's a Swedish guitar player, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Um, he's fantastic, and just, just fantastic finger mm. style playing, fantastic jazz improv, which I just love, you know, yeah. try, trying to get better at that, Yes, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and um, Joe Robinson, great songwriter, great guitar player. Um, so let me ask you, the, 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 the Swedish fellow you're talking about, yeah. does he do uh, jazz improv while he's doing the bass line? Um, yeah, it? some yeah, sometimes. Wow. wow. But uh, he, <laughs> he does break into single note sometimes. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and I love his single note stuff. But yeah. his his arrangements with his bass lines and his yeah. stuff like that are just great. Wow. Um, yeah, look, he's one to look up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, can you show the correct technique of muted finger style? Uh, yeah, by muted finger style, I'm, I'm assuming the um, Chet Atkins, the Chet Atkins sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Merle Travis thumb. Um, it helps to have a thumb pick. Um, I've seen people do it without. It's a different sound. You know, you can mess around. There's no right or wrong. But Chet was using a thumb Chet pick? Chet was using a thumb pick. Merle Travis used a thumb pick. Okay. Tommy uses a thumb pick mm -hmm. on most of his songs. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you basically want the palm or the fleshy part of your hand right here to sit on the bottom three strings. Mm -hmm. um, so E, uh, A, D, mm -hmm. and then G, it should be starting to ring out for the most yeah. part. And then B and E should definitely be ringing out because that's where your melody is going to be for the most part, mm -hmm. unless you're changing it up during a song. So um, a good way to start with this sort of technique is to take, uh, let's take a G chord actually right here. Uh, this is just a G bar chord. Uh, so you start with your thumb on the low string. Make sure you, when you pick this, you got your palm down so it's muted, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I like to set it right down on. Uh, some guys come up pretty far, but it, it just kills it too much for me. Yeah. Um, so you start with the, the low string, then you go up to the D string, then the A string, then the D string, then E, mm -hmm. D, A, D. And that's, you know, another thing, just take your time with it. You yeah. Know? Um, the idea here is to play the the one beat and then the, the back beat is the D string for the most part, mm -hmm. then the next beat, then the back beat again, yeah. then the one again. Um, and if you listen to like bass players, uh, you know, that are going from a one to a five, they... Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, 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 yeah. That's that's kind of what's happening, but you have a backbeat in between. Right. So w whatever chord you're on, this goes back to the music theory. It's nice to know what what notes are in your chord. If you're on a C, you want to go down there to get the five. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So in this case, on a C, you would start on the fifth string, then the D string, then you move this down. Yeah. Catch the five. Yep. In the key of C, mm -hmm. and then back to D, then right there. Yeah. And it becomes common knowledge with just the the shapes that you're in. You know which yeah. ones to use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, That's great. Yeah. Well, just the, the fact that you said using a thumb pick. So um, there's a few rockabilly pieces that that I'll sit there and noodle with, 
and trying to get that muted sound, and I'm like, and I don't use yeah. a thumb pick. I mean, I've used them before, yeah. but I need to try that sometime because I bet you yeah. that, that's yeah. that's part of it. Because I'm like, dear lord, how do I get my <laughs> hand in that position, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, every every guitar player has some has some sort of Achilles heel, has something that they're like, wow, how do I get that? How do I get to this next level? Um, so that's a great little bit. Sure. Thanks for thanks yeah. for sharing that, yeah. man. Um, specific finger designation. For finger picking, I'm assuming they're meaning. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, there's, I mean, usually the way the way I think of it, I mean, you kind of do what you have to do. But at the beginning, when you're um, learning just patterns and mm -hmm. stuff, usually the first three fingers cover the first three strings. Mm -hmm. So you have your index on the G, your uh, middle on the B, mm -hmm. and then your ring finger on the high E. Mm -hmm. That's usually what you can do. So, and then your thumb kind of covers the the bottom three and you don't you know you don't need a thumb pick for this uh, for any of this but like let's just say you have a pattern on a C chord of thumb two one three mm -hmm. so two is going to be here one's going to be here three is going to be here and your bass is going to be on the C note yeah. right so right say you want to move the bass note your fingers stay in the same spot, you yep. know what I mean? Yep. Um, and you Great. can change the pattern up. Also, you can move these three as a set down to these three right here. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you're on a G chord. So that's what I call it inside outside. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Inside picking, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So usually these three fingers stay in one in one group, I guess, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, so uh, it kind of depends on, on everything. And also, once you get to playing songs, that's what determines it all. Yeah. You gotta listen to the song, and however you make it happen, or however the song is, you have to make happen, I guess. You know. Brent, thank you so much. Um, as a truck driver, I have a lot of time without the guitar in my hands. Are there finger exercises while playing my steering wheel guitar? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I like to stretch my hands out. I mean, that's yeah. really important. I yeah. mean, mostly it's before you play. Do yeah. you do any sort of like working with putty or anything? Have you ever done that? You know, I haven't, um, but I, uh, I I think there's some good in that. I mean, yeah. it's a very physical, I mean, this is a physical instrument. Yeah. To be able to hold shapes, you yeah. have to have some forearm strength. Yeah. And yeah. But it's strength and flexibility at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Because obviously people can have a, a super strong yeah. hand, you know yeah. what I mean? And not be able to do anything on this because they don't have the flexibility mixed with it. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a balance with that. Yeah. 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 I think if you can have your hand on the guitar, then obviously do that. Mm -hmm. But you're saying you can at that time. Yeah. And Brent, what I've found is working with putty or working with some, you know, a grip master, which is mm -hmm. like it's like trademark. You can go online and find those. I think I have them in the store. I think that I think uh, kit.com slash your guitar stage. If not. Uh, Chris, let's make sure let's put let's put one of those inside the store. If not, you could just Google search that Grip Master, and somebody will have it. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, Brent, what I've found is that if I do that, if I'm working with some sort of putty or something like that, it gives me the when I go to play, I have the sensation as if I have been playing a while because you're because you're you're moving your hand around. Now obviously you're not learning any licks, so any of that muscle memory and stuff like that, that stuff isn't there. But the actual moving of your hands, getting it warmed up and everything else, it does help. Or at least yeah. it does with me. Yeah. For sure. Um, Colin, when you started learning guitar, what did you start with? Major, minor scale or pentatonic? Um, I would say I started with the pentatonic. Um, it's the easiest scale to get your fingers around. I mean, honestly, it's mm -hmm. just the easiest scale to play. And yeah. it's also, I mean, so practical. And yeah. you can use, I mean, you know what I mean? It's used by every guitarist on the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, from, yeah. from the best to the beginner. You know yeah. what I mean? Indeed. Um, so definitely learn the pentatonic, pentatonic scale first. Um, and then major. And I haven't really gotten into minor like I should. Mm -hmm. I want to learn like the harmonic minor. I know licks from it, right, but yeah. I don't know how to like put it all together on the next. So right. I should. Yeah. Um, but the major and the minor, as far as natural major and, mm -hmm. or natural minor, I should say, are hand in hand because of the, um, like uh, the on, on the sixth degree. If you start on a major from a major scale on the sixth degree and end on the sixth degree, you have a minor scale. Right. In the uh, relative minor, I guess, right, which yeah. that's you know going back to theory land and mm -hmm, stuff. But mm -hmm. um, so when you know a major scale, you know a minor scale yep, as yep. well. Um, and which all is the really jazz handy. modes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the jazz modes. You just gotta you just gotta 
think of it differently, yeah. but you yeah. know them all. Yeah. That's what's so funny about those. I mean, they're not, they sound like rocket science, and they still right. feel like it. Yeah. But yeah. it's just the major scale in different spots, exactly. starting and ending on different spots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, great stuff. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, can we have a close-up of his fingernails? So you, so I noticed that you, uh, that you use fingernails also. Oh, yay, thank you so much. Another donation. Um, Kevin, well painted. Nice. <laughs> my uh, brother. Is that your bro? That's nice. my brother. <laughs> Kevin, I, I just, uh, I looked, you, uh, Colin yeah. ha had mentioned you, and I looked you up online, said so real nice stuff, and of course, real nice brother. Yes. Thanks, bro. Yeah, nice brother. <laughs> Super kind. <laughs> so check out uh, Kevin Oil Painting online as well. Right. He's got he's That's got right. some killer stuff that he does. What's his specialty? Like, what does he do? He does landscapes and seascapes yeah. and stuff like that on canvas. So, okay. Like, you just think of a painter. Like, That's commission? He does. Like, like he he's done that. Do that? Yeah, yeah, he does that. I mean, he's busy with everything else, you know. Right. Um, but he teaches how to paint. Uh, oh, I love he, it. He has his own brushes and his own oh, everything. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. That's super cool. Nice. His own brushes. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, thank you, Kevin. So kind, bud. Um, all right. Good, good, good. All right. So remember, I'm only looking for those with a question mark as well. In fact, I tell you what. Let's let's we're gonna bump over to uh, Facebook here in just a minute. We're gonna get some questions there, and then Colin, in about five minutes or so, you wanna do you wanna do after our Facebook questions? Would you wanna do a um, Another bit? Yeah. Play another bit? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Okay. All right, so let's check this out. So we're on Facebook now, and actually I want to zing all the way to the bottom here, going backwards. Okay, and we talked about that one, which finger pattern to use. And Danny, if you specifically, if you, if you need some patterns for that, check out the free course today, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. It's the top 30 lessons that I teach all my students. And there is a finger picking video in there with lots of exercises from very easy to more complex. And uh, it's basically using the same idea. I mean, this, mm -hmm. is, this is a universal idea uh, based off of classical guitar. But even if classical guitar never existed, it, we would go, well, the thumb goes here and these fingers go here. So, <laughs> so check that out. That's uh, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Uh, how many finger picking patterns would you say you most often used? And I can answer that one but you answer that yeah one. well it, it depends on what style of music you're playing if you're playing yeah. finger style you're going to be outside of patterns inside of patterns m many different patterns that, you you're know. doing everything yeah you're just constantly but if you're playing songs you know mm -hmm. what i mean yes. you've got uh you know thumb two one three mm -hmm. thumb one two three thumb three two one mm -hmm. or i mean a lot of times people don't uh do thumb two one three they just use the thumb for two things so <laughs> They'll do that thing, which yeah. is thumb one, thumb two, thumb one, thumb two. That's a, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but, you, like, yeah, you could probably answer that better. Yeah. Well, no, what I was going to say, you know, like watching you play, the, the way, you know, when you're playing solo guitar like Colin's doing, all eyes and all ears are on you and so you're playing the melody line and you're playing the bass line and so it requires you to not just stick with one pattern because if he did that for three minutes playing classical gas and just going through the chords you'd be like all right already with that pattern mm -hmm. you'd be like yeah. okay plus you couldn't really play that because there's syncopations and there's other things that would interrupt the pattern and make it not sound this, like, what, what like you're looking song. for yeah. but when you're in the background you're playing some rhythm guitar or what mm -hmm. have you yeah. you know you want there to be some sort of drone or some sort of consistent tempo uh, rhythmic type of uh, what we call a, a, a motif uh, it's a rhythmic idea mm -hmm. or a melodic idea and basically it's there to to lay the bass line down or to lay the 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 yeah. comp down so that whatever's on top, the top line, the, the vocalist usually, it can be highlighted. Yeah. And so Ryan's asking, did previously knowing another instrument help your progress on guitar? Um, probably, yeah. Def no, I would say definitely yes, because it helps your ear. You know, I, I learned music, you know, in, through my ear, you know, like listening to things and uh, then making sure I have it right, you know, by the music and stuff like that. So it definitely helps you in that sense. Um, does it help with your fingers? Well, you know, violin doesn't give you as big a callus as a guitar. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not as hard to press down, that sort of thing. So maybe not so much that. It yeah. takes less strength as well to press down. You probably have a better string. ear for intonation. but <laughs> It helps with that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I still can't play slide, but yeah, <laughs> it, it helps with that. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. So, yeah. you know, you guys, on, on a violin, there are no frets. So mm -hmm. imagine a guitar with no frets, which there are uh, fretless guitars, and yeah. I don't know why people keep trying to make it a thing, because it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's just to play, play the damn violin. But because uh, you can't play chords or anything very very well. There's always an intonation issue, and it's a kind of a chordal instrument. So, yeah, uh, but imagine no fret. So now you have to know, it would be like playing slide everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And that's why slide sounds like the way it does. But if you're trying to yeah. play it not sounding like slide with all the all yeah. back and forth, then it becomes strange. Yeah, but, yeah. It sounds like a muted slide. Kind yeah, of, yeah. You know, because it doesn't ring the same. Yeah. Uh, how do you take a song and create a finger-picking version of it? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I'm still, you know, I'm still trying to figure all this out. You know, mm -hmm. arranging is one of my. I love to do it. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm the best at it. I'm, I'm trying to to mm -hmm. work at that. You know, and uh, develop that skill. You know, the skill. But you know, you have to figure out the chords in the song. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, then figure out the melody, and then figure out how you want to present it. You yeah. know, um, there's a song. You know, Hallelujah by yeah. uh, uh, Cohen, Leonard yeah, uh -huh. Cohen, I think. Um, the chorus, you know, has that, um... Okay, so it's got a melody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. choosing to put it this low on the guitar because mm -hmm. later on I want to be able to play it higher, mm -hmm. an octave jump sort of thing. Well, what are the chords? Well, it starts on the, the four chord, it starts on an A. So let's see, there's the melody, there's the melody, then I hit an A chord, you know, an A note with that. I put a little, a couple notes from an A chord in between. Mm -hmm. Then the next melody goes down to an E, e chord, there's my melody note, mm -hmm. then I hit an E. Just arpeggiating the yeah. chord right there. Mm -hmm. So arpeggiating is when you take a chord and you're playing notes out of it, yeah. one note at a time. Yeah. And this is where a lot of folks are like, do I really need to know theory? You either know theory or you know theory, but you don't know that you know theory and you're just <laughs> using your ear and you're just yeah. kind of hopping around until you come up with the same answers that you would have, yeah. chances are, if you'd known theory. Yeah. So like... You know, what Colin's saying there is if it's an A, if he's playing an A bass note and he knows it's an A major chord, well then now knowing where the different places that he can yeah. find that A chord yeah. on his guitar is really, really important. Yeah. And the more you know, yeah. the less time it takes. You can get really quick at this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, as far as creating a good arrangement, you know, like I said, I'm still trying to figure it out. But, like, mm -hmm. that's a trick is like, okay, well, don't give away the high... Uh, octave jump until later in the song yeah. or use it you know so later on I go okay here's an A chord and there's my melody so I Yeah. It's a surprise to people. Yes. It's the same chords. It's yep. the same melody. But I was like, well, I could use tremolo picking, which is mm -hmm. that technique right there, to kind of create a more special, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's just, beautiful. Just no, kind of, I think you're yeah. doing it great. And, you know, this is where, you know, your ear comes in. You're just like, this is, this is what I want to do. And, you know, classic pop songs... They save, you know, they, they, they do a little bit in the beginning. Yeah. And, they, and I'm, when I mean pop songs, you know, I hate pop. No, you love pop, trust me. If you listen to the Beatles or anybody, <laughs> you like pop music. We're not talking about Britney Spears. We're talking about music that, that's classic, that you've heard a bunch. And they're always saving something bigger for the end. You don't, you just, you don't lead with that, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and you got to know your bass line. You got to know, because the bass line is going to tell, or the chords. And then with those chords, you're able to play yeah. uh, the melodies and the harmonies yeah. and everything else. And I was going to say, the best way to learn so far that I've found how to like arrange other stuff is mm -hmm. learn other people's arrangements. Mm -hmm. Learn their arrangements. Learn where they put the melody, why they put the melody, what key they did it in. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you could take another pop song, put it in the same key, yeah. because the melody is going to be in a, you know, in the same shapes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you'll be able to kind of, and you know, it may not work in that key, then you tried it in a different key from a different yeah. song you learned. Yeah. It's just about becoming familiar with how, how it's done. Yeah, yes. yeah, beautiful, beautiful. You said you, um, blues had a great influence on your choice in finger pick. Did you dabble or engage in classical at all, or did you stick 
um, or did you stick to your influences only? Yeah, um, yeah, blues did have a good, uh, big influence, and I, I, st I love playing that that sort of stuff. And then Merle Travis and those those guys have songs that have a lot of blues in it, and I yeah. love that Jerry Reed, um, and so that's a lot of fun. Beast and beast mood. A uh, classical, um, I. Uh, didn't really get much into, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's some techniques that I absolutely love, like the tremolo yeah. yeah. picking. I mean, that's, that's straight, that's straight Segovia right there, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? That comes from those techniques, and mm -hmm. that's just with two fingers and the right. thumb. Yeah, they a lot, of, a lot of them do it with three fingers and the thumb, but mm -hmm. it creates a different sort of sound. Yeah, um, yeah. And Tommy Emanuel uses that, so yeah. I probably, you know, I probably got it from that as well. Yeah. Um, when he's doing certain songs. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so yeah, some techniques from yeah. from classical for sure. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you learn to incorporate percussive technique as you pick and strum? Hmm. Um, yeah. So, well, that's a good question. And I you think do that some. Yeah, I do that yeah. some. Mm -hmm. And with, I mean, there's different kind of genres of finger style. You've got some guys that are doing full-blown percussion right, where, they're, yeah. where, they're, where they're using two hands and they're tapping and they're using their whole guitar as a drum, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really do that, you know, right. I've kind of dabbled with it, but I don't do that. Um, and then as far as like percussion with the thumb pick, you know what I mean? That's creating a bass line, but then you can... You can, you know, lay this down on the bridge right here right. as you play a bass note, which that's, you know, it takes some getting used to right there. Yeah. And that creates a drum. You yeah. know, I mean, there, there's your kick drum, especially if you're plugged in and you're going through a PA. Yeah. That sounds like a kick. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. Um, but then you have, you can do um, percussive stuff in between. So like the classical gas uh, at mm -hmm. the beginning of the show. Um, and it, and it, that's just a drum fill. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, like what a drummer would do, you yeah. just kind of listen and see how many hits you can get in yeah. until you have to land back on the chord. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that. I hope that answers that that's, question. That's good. That, that's good stuff. Uh, does the acoustic provide a better learning surface for finger picking or does it not matter? Um, you can do it great on both. Uh, it just depends on what sound you want to get. Um, electric guitars are going to be a little bit easier to play depending, depending on the one you have, you know, if mm -hmm. it's set up well. Yeah. Uh, so in in theory, it might develop more strength to play on an acoustic, but that I mean that's, you know, there's yeah. amazing amazing guitarists that play electric that use their fingers. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, one of those is Matteo Sassato. Mm -hmm. um, he's you can look him up on Instagram and anywhere. I think he's touring with Tori Kelly. Mm -hmm. his, yeah, uh, he's her a guitarist. beast. He is a beast. Yeah. But a lot of the time, he uses his his fingers, and he's on electric most of the time, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, getting fantastic sounds. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you really know what you're doing, I think, a, I always tell people all the mm -hmm. time, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm a finger picker. I'm not, I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't, I can't flat pick or use a, use a regular pick. And I'm like, well, the reason you can't is because you don't practice that, but you mm -hmm. definitely can. And, Nine times out of ten, you're going to get better tone from your pick than you would your, just your fingers, sure. at least when it comes to electric. But with that being said, there are some players out there who are using their fingers, and it's a real intimate tone, and there's something yeah. about that strength coming off that finger in such a way, but it's a the totally developed yeah. thing. It's not just going to happen yeah. overnight. It yeah. would have to be something that you'd have to commit to and really yeah. dig in. But I've heard some yeah. great players it's just that the tones coming from yeah. their those fingertips that's right. that pick every time that's right and even folks like john mayer you yeah know what i mean he uses his fingers on on so many electric songs yeah great tone yeah great tone. yeah he's got yeah. fantastic tone uh did you start with a thumb pick or flat or yeah thumb pick or flat pick i started with a flat pick um and uh you know uh, mostly because of jack pearson you know I mean, he was playing blues and stuff like that and he uses his fingers too a lot um he'll yeah he'll Put his pick right there in his between his fingers and start using his his um, fingers to play that style. Um, so I did start with a normal pick, but eventually because I found Tommy Emanuel and folks like that, yeah. this just you know came in handy. You know, obviously. Yeah, yeah. For, for those songs. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. It's part of that sound. Beautiful. Would you play another one for us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's do it.
<laughs> I love that. Thank you. I love that. Oh, man. So uh, what was that, an original? No, that is a song by Merle Travis. Okay, actually. I apologize yeah. for not knowing no, that no, one. No. That, is, okay. that is awesome. And you're going to do one original for us yes, on the way end. out, yes, right? Yes. Okay, yes. sweet. Sweet. That is fantastic. Um, so someone's asking, how do you meld melody with chords? What do I need to know to build a new finger-picking song? Mm. Yeah. Um, I would say the three, and th these are big blanket things. Like, these are not going to come. You can't just go home and learn them all tonight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, learn, like I was saying, the harmonized major scale and know where uh, notes are. Learn the scales around the chords so you know what notes you have to play with. You know what I mean? In the key of C, right? I know that I have, you know. I have all of those notes to play with. You know what I mean? So if I create a melody. Yeah. I know all those notes are in the key of C, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I can so I can create stuff around the chords mm -hmm. and around the bass notes. Also, that's uh, it's helpful to learn, you know, different chords in the key. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean? know your one your the positions of your ones, of your twos, of your threes, of your fours, of your fives. Mm -hmm. That's a big blanket like, okay, you know, you know, that's gonna take a long time. You yeah, know? Yeah. Uh, but take it bit by bit, you know, mm -hmm. just learn one thing at a time. Yeah. Um, also the next blanket thing is learn songs. Mm -hmm. Copy what the other people are doing because a lot of them are not just sticking to one key. Right. You know what I mean? So that line right there, I just messed around. I... Right? Mm -hmm. It's using some diminished chords and I yeah. wouldn't know that unless I learned right. a Tommy Emanuel song that used that. Or yeah. a, you know what I mean? Yeah, indeed. Um, and uh, so learn learning songs, once again, that takes forever, you know, but start with easy songs. Start mm -hmm. with Freight Train. Simple melody and super chord or simple chords, right? Yeah. Um, and even that takes time. Yeah. <laughs> even yeah. that, you know, uh, just to develop the the physical side because yeah. there's this physical side of guitar and then there's the musical side of guitar. Yeah. And most people are are struggling with the physical side, yeah. and and that's just the way it is because yeah. it's a physical instrument. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's why we, you know, it helps to play. Um, scales and helps yeah. to do exercises like you're saying with the with the putty in yeah. your hands and stuff like that because yeah. it's physical. Um, but uh, yeah, those are big blanket, you know, statements, big things to learn, but mm -hmm. just without, I would say that'd be it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's that's awesome. Um, okay, so let's uh, tonal reach or finger reach around the chord. Don't know what that means. If that you do, then you can jump on that one, but I'm not sure what that means. Um, pinch harmonics on acoustic guitar? No. Uh, but I don't think that's probably what you're, I don't think that's what you're probably asking. You're probably asking, so, you know, pinch harmonic on, on the acoustic guitar is not going to be very impressive because it's, you typically need some sort of overdrive or something. But mm -hmm. with that being said, no one's asked it yet, and I will ask it. So uh, we noticed that you're doing some some wizardry up here, right? You're doing some sort of harmonics. Can yeah. you uh, can you go over like a basic idea of what you're thinking when you're doing that and, and show the technique? Yeah, absolutely. So um, and kind of what they sound like, uh, like. sort of thing right there. Mm -hmm. um, basically, what it is, is, you know, we know harmonics, normal harmonics happen at the 12th fret. You know, if we were to just uh, lightly put our finger over the 12th fret and strum, we get this natural harmonic sort of mm -hmm. thing. You also have them over the 7th fret and the 5th fret. Right. And I'm discovering there's a couple more, but I'm not sure how to use them yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, this is the strongest one. So, basically, um, the technique of, of like these, uh, I'm not sure what they call them, I guess harp harmonics, because mm -hmm. um, it sounds like a harp when you do mm -hmm. that sort of thing right there. Um, and now when you're picking, you're yeah. picking with both your thumb and your your third finger? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes exactly. So instead of doing like this, mm -hmm. where you, you, you uh, cover the note here and right. you pick the note here, you just right. do it with one hand. So you take mm -hmm. your, your index finger and you put that over where um, this hand would have covered, right. and then your thumb 
um, picks the string underneath. Okay. And mm -hmm. that's tricky right there. Yeah. Because it's like your hand has to look like a spider. Yeah. And come down here and hold this awkward position yes. and accurately pick the string that you're covering. Yes. You know? So in this case, I'm, I'm over the A string. Also, you don't need a thumb pick. You know, mm -hmm. you can do that with your thumb right there. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're trying it, um, you know, just go like to the low E string, for instance, mm -hmm. and put your index over the 12th fret. And then get your thumb to pick that string. Yeah. And then you can take your hand off, let it ring. Um, if you just hold it there. Just, but you then know, you're also catching it. it with your third finger as well. You're so you're doing um, thumb and third. Yeah. Thumbs. So yeah. yeah, that's where um, the harp harmonics come into play because if you, um, let's just say we're just doing it on the open strings. We're not fretting anything yet. Um, you know, you can pick the harmonics like that, yeah. but the harp harmonics or false harmonics is where you mix in uh, actual notes with it. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like this. Oh, right okay, okay. So That's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, there's real notes, but you can't really tell because yeah. it just sounds like a harp, you know? Yeah, there's, but and there's they're no higher harmonics. up anyhow. So That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So this That's is the, clever. Yeah. And this is the pattern for that. So let's just say you're starting to, to do what I just did. Mm -hmm. uh, you start on the low E string harmonic. Mm -hmm. You hit that. Then you get your ring finger to pick the G string right mm -hmm. there. Then the A string harmonic. Yeah. And then, uh, or sorry, B string with your ring finger. Mm -hmm. Then D string harmonic, E string ring finger. Right. That takes forever just to get the... Sure, yeah. I mean, it's hard yeah. to get your ring finger out there hitting yep. what you want it to hit, let alone keep this happening. Right. So just practice that slowly. E string, G, uh, G A, B, D, E. Yeah. And that's when you go that way. Yeah. On the way up in pitch. When you go back down, let's just say you start on the G, then you pick the E with your ring finger. Mm -hmm. Then go to the D, then pick the B with your ring finger, then A, G with your ring finger, and then E, and then D, and then and you so start you, over. Do you do this? You could do this with a C chord or, or anything right. else. That's and right. then this way, you just have to follow that first finger for for yes. the harmonics yes. on, the, on the three low strings. Yeah. So if you think of it, this is the halfway point in the string. But if yeah. you fret a note, that halfway point gets moved up. Yeah. Right. So let's go. Uh, let's go to the third fret and just put a bar down, right? Mm -hmm. And now we've moved our bar from there up to here. So now if we play the harmonics here, they're not going to work, right? right? We have to go up here. So it's like, it, think of it as a mirror image. Yeah. I, I picture this as my, as my, um, you know, first frets, you know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. it just, it just starts over. Exactly. Um, so there's my G chord. I've got my finger down there in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. And I just do, do the same thing. Uh, So just make sure when you're going up, you leave two strings gap in between the harmonic mm -hmm. note and the real note. So right here, I left those two, the A and the D, open. Two string gap. On the way back down, you leave one string in between the harmonic note and the, the picked note. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're able that's to continue beautiful. going yeah. back and forth. Yeah. And so yeah, you can do it on different string or different chords. So let's say we have this weird um, E minor chord. You can go. Uh, Right. And then you can incorporate, mm -hmm. the, you know, hammer-ons and pull-offs with yeah. it. Yeah. And that's, you know, you can get really cool sounds with all Yeah, of I love that. Yeah, that's killer. Killer stuff, man. And someone says sweep arpeggio and acoustic guitar. Um, no. <laughs> that's the wrong style. Um, all right. So basically, if you wanted to do that, you would just do it like you would on electric. But, you know, there's a reason people don't do that. It's just because it doesn't, the guitar, that, that instrument doesn't really lend itself to that. Um, how do you blend the voice with the guitar? Does the key of the voice really matter? So, yeah, uh, if you're talking about singing and playing at the same time, then yeah, that definitely matters. You like if you're going to be singing something, it needs to be in your in your key, and that that changes from song to song. It's not a specific key. Some people think, oh, I I sing songs in the key of G. My mom still thinks this. She's like, oh, my key is this. And I'm like, it doesn't work like that because songs change. Some songs are in higher pitches uh, or the the notes are go go higher. Uh, but uh, yeah, it definitely needs to be in your in your range. 
what's the nut width of of this guitar? That is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> You're like me. I don't oh, care man. about stuff. I'm just like <laughs> it works. Uh, it's a little bit wider. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, if you look up the Maton 808 TE, Maton 808 TE, mm -hmm. you'll you'll be able to find it out. Um, it's a little thicker than the last guitar I had. Yeah, it looks um, a little wider. Yeah, it's a little wider than that, but it's not too wide to where I can't get my thumb over the top. It's just it's just perfect for me. Um, look at mine, but yeah. I'll look that up with you yeah. <laughs> after the show. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Uh, good. Someone has uh, some real nice things. Folks are saying about your playing, of course. Uh, Okay, Ronnie, I'm not sure what you mean by tonal reach or finger reach around the chord. I'm not sure what you mean by tonal reach or finger reach around the corner. If you can get a little bit more specific, that'd be awesome. Something, if I could, if I could touch on that yeah, one man. where it said, um, we, we already covered it, but about how, like, what theory do I need to know? Yes. And I kind of by bypassed that part of the question. Okay. You don't need to know any theory yes. to, to write a finger style song. If you hear a melody and you hear a, a, some chords, it can be simple. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be hard. You know, um, you don't need any theory. It's it's yeah. all it's all it could come out of your head. You know, what yes, I mean? theory just helps us put it on the guitar. Yeah, you know, it helps explain what's happening. But there's a ton of yeah. guitar players that, you know, that you know to 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 clarify, I mean, what, what Colin's saying is 100% right, but I know people will hear it wrong. They'll be like, sure, Eric sure. says we need theory, and Colin just said we didn't need theory. That's not <laughs> what Colin's saying. What Colin's saying is that if you're, you know, if you're listening by ear, you're going to find the notes. If you're dedicated mm -hmm. enough, you'll find the notes. But the guy that wrote that was either music, using music theory or he was using his ear from things that he had heard from other people playing, which mm -hmm. is all comprised of patterns. And patterns yeah. in music is what we call music theory. It's like, okay, this is a B7 chord. Well, why is it a B7 chord? Helpful to know that stuff. But yes, you could literally go your whole life, never learn what, what you guys are calling what some folks call music theory, but nonetheless, if you're playing patterns by anybody, mm -hmm. the second that yeah. Colin started learning a, a Tommy Manual tune or learned a scale on a violin, he's in theory land immediately. Uh, and so anything that you're listening to, it's not just a cacophony of notes that someone just pulled out of any key and let's just throw them all together and make mm -hmm. some beautiful music. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the, the more you study this, the more you go, oh, man, these patterns are so obvious, right? You yeah. look up in the night sky, you see, you know, you see the planets and you see everything else just doing their thing. And you're just like, well, this is just crazy. It's just bedlam. But it's not. There are real specific patterns. And uh, if you're paying attention, especially on the instrument, you're going to find these patterns mm -hmm. and they're yeah. going to reveal stuff to you. Absolutely. So. And there, there's <clears throat> common ground in every song you know for instance mm -hmm. because of those patterns yes you know? and you things overlap and you'll be like oh i already know that yeah you know what I mean? yeah and the more you do it then the more that stuff overlaps and the more you, it, it it all just becomes yeah. uh, quicker you start accelerating yeah. so you know i would guess that even though you couldn't you weren't allowed to skip those first years you're probably at the place in your playing now if i remember five years into my playing um I was 18, 19 or something like that, and I was just, like, it was all opening up for me. So mm -hmm. you're probably at the point now to where, you know, you're getting past the calisthenic difficulties of playing, and now you're just like, you know, probably everything's just happening now for you where, where the road is opening up, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah. Is, is it, if you think about today where you're at and... and back three years ago and five years ago, yeah. would you say that's true? Or? Yeah, I would, I would. And it's not that everything's easier, it's just different things are easier. For mm -hmm. instance, the physical side of the instrument's easier now right. than it was, you know what I mean? Yes. It stinks to be trapped physically yes. because you hear things that you want to play, mm -hmm. um, but your your fingers just can't do them yet. You right. know? And so once you can get over the physical hump, which I'm still, I mean, everybody's still feeling yeah. it, you know what I mean? Like my picking speed, you know, I sit down with a metronome for 30 minutes a day yeah. and just make sure I can, I'm yeah. not that fast, you know. Uh -huh. I want to get faster at that, so that's a physical limitation that yes. I'm, I'm working around. Yeah, um, and chord stretches and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. different passages and songs. That's all physical. Yeah, um, but it is nice to be able to like just work on the musical side of it and, mm -hmm. and worry less about the physical side. Yeah, more and more. Yeah, you know, it just keeps going. 
in yes, that direction. Yes, exactly. Which is a I good thing. The, I love how you put in that. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Back to finger. Back to fingernails. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you uh, do you ever break nails? And do you, if so, do you use like yeah. like uh, <laughs> the uh, press ons? I, I thankfully haven't yet <laughs> had yeah. to. You know what I mean? I've been. Uh, People look thankful. at you with nails anyhow. And then you got the big white oh, lady man. nails, and I people know. are like, what are you doing? People are like, why do you have them on one hand? That's I, the question. Exactly. Yeah, but um, I do, like, uh, I have broken, like, half of them. Yeah. But to where it was the it was the right half, and I could use the other half yes. and still be okay. Yeah. Um, and mine aren't that long. Yeah. Um, so it's not that bad. But I do put, like, hand lotion on them to strengthen them at night. Oh, really? Yeah. Hand and, lotion? Yeah. Like, what What specifically? Um, Like, uh, just stuff, I'm not sure what the brand is, but it makes it, you know, it's just like some, for dry skin. Really? I mean? And that, yeah. that helps. Makes yeah. Them, makes them less brittle, I would Less imagine. brittle. Stronger. Oh, keeps, keeps, nice. Keeps them hydrated, I guess. Okay. It's kind of like your hair. I mean, you know. Yeah. You got to keep it hydrated. And so, um, also, what I was going to, what was I going to say about that? Um. About uh, breaking the nails, uh, I totally do you keep know. them trimmed? You I do con- keep them constant, trimmed. Constantly constantly filing, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I use like sandpaper, like yes. 120 grit or something. Yeah, like that. that's really good. And uh, different sandpaper works for different people too. Like sometimes I get it too smooth and I don't have enough ring off of the string. Really, I yeah. didn't know that. I don't know why, but you know, huh. some people take it down to steel wool, and that, that that works for them, but it doesn't work for me for some reason. I have to go back to like a like a nasty file that would hog off a lot, and I would right. just kind of put some nicks. I know they're microscopic nicks, right. like I can't feel them, but they're there. And wow. It, I just want to make sure that my pick sounds like my nails. Yeah. And that each nail sounds the same, especially for like that. Yes. If my index is like a dull, mm-hmm. you know, where it's too clean on yeah. my nail, and then this one's super sharp sounding, it's going to sound really yeah. wonky. You yes, know what I mean? indeed. Um, so. And if you guys are going like, God, that's a lot, of, a lot to think about. <laughs> well, that's what uh, that's what excellence looks like. You know, it's like you're just like, God, it's got to be better. It's got to be better. It's got to be better. So um, we can all benefit from more of that. You know, that's great, killer stuff. Okay, um, have you seen James Taylor's nail kit? <laughs> Yeah, no, he has. Yeah. Have you ever watched that video where he's talking? He just goes over all yeah, the yeah, things. Yeah. He's geeking I'm out sure on his nails, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm sure he's. I'm sure he sells a nail kit now. <laughs> uh, it feels unnatural to use my third finger whilst picking. Is this a habit I should get out of? And do you use your pinky? Um, you don't need your third finger. I mean, it, it's really personal preference. You know what I mean? It, as far as this sort of style goes, because I can play. That's using the third and the second because mm-hmm. that's what I was saying earlier. Usually, these three kind of cover those three strings. Yeah, right. Or wait, I think but, what they're saying is like right, like yeah. this is one, two, three, four. So they're saying, do you need this third finger? I think that's yeah. what he's asking. Yeah. Well, you don't have to. You okay. can use you can use two. Yeah. You know what I mean, like that. For that, and my third's not doing anything. Yep. And I never use my pinky. I just, I mean, yeah. some people do, but yeah. it's not. Usually, what I do for that is I anchor it down. You yeah. know, and some people. Like that, some people don't like that. Yep. I did not like it, but my favorite guitarist did, so I forced myself to do it. Yeah. And I love it now. It's just natural. Yeah. It's not. Um, it, it moves around. You know, yeah. I, I'm not constraining myself. My hand's too right. small to keep it there, yes. and then do what I have to do. You yeah. Know? Um, so, yeah, it, it just depends. It's personal preference, and if the song needs your third finger, you know. Yeah. Mean? Yeah. My my rule for that is use it when you need it. But like you said, you know, the main ones you're going to be using are first uh, first finger and your thumb and then your second finger yeah. and then your third finger and once in a blue moon like once a year there's going to be something <laughs> where you got to play five notes and you can throw that pinky in sure. but I don't even have a nail I never have a nail yeah, on my pinky same here. so it makes me even weirder yeah guy, it's has, like, guy has four nails on one <laughs> four really long nails yeah. on one of his hands it's weird uh-huh. uh, yeah um is there anything you can do for a twisted neck other than replacement? Ken, you'd have I'd have to see the neck, like how twisted it is, but uh, bring that to a guitar luthier and have them take a look at it because it could be as simple as a um, a truss rod yeah. adjustment, yeah. or you could legitimately have a, a twisted neck. But if it's twisted, if it's going this way, that's mm-hmm. it's pretty rough. Mm-hmm. 
Have you tried banjo picks for finger picking guitar? I mean, that's pretty much what yeah. a thumb pick is, right? Yeah, is it well, the the little picks that go on the tip of your fingers. I think oh, they're yeah, about. yeah, yeah. Um, and I have tried them, and I don't like them. I just can't. I can't get used to them. I'd rather yeah. use my nails. And they sound weird. They're um, a little. They're yeah, a bit. Well, brash. those are kind of metal. I yes. think the banjo picks themselves are metal, but they also make plastic ones for your okay. fingertips. And those work, and I've, I've seen good finger-style players use those. Mm -hmm. But there are five more things to carry around. Exactly. I say that all the time. People yeah. say, well, why should I use picks? And I'm like, ah, you know, you go into a store. I mean, yeah. you, you're using your... If you didn't have your thumb pick with you, you've got a nail there, and you would yeah. just play those songs or yeah, whatever. Exactly. It's different it's different songs for a different uh, whether I use a thumb pick or not. Yeah. But you can always carry a, th a thumb pick around with you, but yeah. here you're, ca you're carrying a... Yeah. All these other picks, yeah, it's so kind of goofy. I, I don't personally. And that matter of fact, if I could, I would get rid of these and just play with my fingertips. Mm -hmm. But my fingertips are just too fleshy yeah. and, and soft. Yeah. Do you know, are, are there some uh, acoustic players that, that just yeah. use fingertips? Yeah. yeah. Tommy Manuel. Tommy just uses it's no nails, it's huh? It's crazy. But he's yeah. playing 24-7. That's right. And I imagine <laughs> his fingers are... Yeah. Or hard, yeah. As, as he's, rocks. he's got yeah. some sun calluses there. Yeah, I, I know a guy, a finger style guitarist, that plays uh, without nails, mm -hmm. but he puts super glue on his fingertips mm -hmm. uh, when he has to record or play a show. So it gets that nail sound, but he has no nails. Yeah, I'm thinking that's genius. I need to try that, dude. For years, I because of just maintaining nails and just being like, Dad, gone it. Which I've, <laughs> over the years I've gotten used to. It's like I brush my hand with. I, I brush my teeth with my left hand and do I, I'm These doing more things. things like that to, because I find yeah. this is my dominant hand so I'm doing stuff all the time cutting or whatever mm -hmm. and then inevitably you break a nail and you're like come on yeah. you know yeah. I gotta play this thing tomorrow or whatever <laughs> and uh, and I keep in my mind going dude just cut your nail just mm -hmm. cut your nails and oh, be man. that dude and go and see if yeah. you know but but you know it would take like a year yeah. to get over that hump over, over that hump back to but the then no so more nails. listen if you're starting <laughs> out don't grow your nails out. <laughs> yeah. Develop your fingertips. <laughs> it's a it's a blessing and a curse. Oh, a blessing and a curse, man. Do you seek to learn more than one song at a time? Um, now I do, but you know, two years ago I didn't. You know, uh, it's it's kind of hard to do that uh, depending on the song. If it's two easy songs, then you might be able to get away with it. But mm -hmm. usually just stick to one song, I would say, it, depending on what you're doing. You know, yeah. if you're in a different style, not playing finger style, and you can do many different things. And if you're learning comps and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But mm -hmm. if it's a finger style song, it's got three different main sections to the song and small sections inside of that. You got to take it, uh, you know, with bite sizes. You yes. Know? Just, you know, learn a verse. Yep. Be able to play that. Uh, yeah. Be able to play it slow correctly with a metronome, mm -hmm. then take on the chorus, do the same thing, then take on the bridge, and then take on the cool little ending, you know, yes. and then put it all together, mm -hmm. slow with the metronome, oh, the chorus is not as fast as the rest of it, yes. so I need to practice that alone. It's yeah. just, it's about efficiency, too, yeah. When, yeah. You're, when you're learning that. Yeah, I love it. You've got some really good um, built-in, I say built-in, you've developed them, but you've got some great practice techniques. So there's nothing that, that Colin said today that I would disagree with, not that I'm, you know, you know, I'm just another opinion, but I like when I hear other guitar players talk because um, I just know the stuff that works for me. That's how I write yeah. books and I, and I create courses is what has worked for me because that's how I used to teach. I'd be like, okay, well, this is how I got over that. And, yeah. and then eventually... Uh, you know, you run into other guitar players, and someone might have a, diff a slightly different twist. But I love, I love to hear that um, that I'm not completely crazy. No. <laughs> That's working for you. Uh, okay, so so this is an interesting question, and um, so he says, "Can he shred on electric guitar?" I want to know, uh, can one be great in both worlds of rock and acoustic fingerstyle? Hmm. And hmm. we we talked about this earlier. It's like. Whatever you spend your time doing, you're going to be good at. If you are, if you love Netflix marathons, you're going to be, you're going to know how to get to whatever it is you're looking for really quickly. If you're practicing acoustic guitar all the time, you're going to be really great at acoustic. And we live in a world of folks that are that have specialties, or the ones that you're hearing, right? Colin is so good at what he does because he pours himself into the acoustic instrument, and every time he, if he picks. He, plays electric, but every time, and tell me if I'm wrong, it, you know, every time he's picking up the electric, he's taking away time that he could have on the acoustic. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
Anything you want to say about that, or did yeah, I, is well, that pretty, I, pretty, I, pretty I really don't shred on electric. Like I, my picking speed is not fast. Like like, like I was saying, that's that's one thing that mm. I really want to work on, and so that's what I why I sit with a metronome and yeah. practice my picking speed. You know, yeah, and practice it with scales and practice right. it with chord progressions and arpeggios and stuff like that. And I love trying to do the like a. Yeah. Like little sweeping licks yeah. on an acoustic, you know what I Can mean? Can you do that again? I want to see yeah. how much you're picking there and how much all that's legato. Oh yeah, beautiful. That sort of yeah. thing. And it's just... You know, yeah. Beautiful. Um, well, lots of hammer-ons and pull-offs there. And that's so right. That's right. Those yeah. take time to develop. Yeah. And with acoustic, I mean, you can get away with a lot of different things too um, with with your fingers. You can mm -hmm. create a lot of speed that you wouldn't nor ordinarily get. like. You know, that's mm -hmm. using like banjo roll sort of technique. And then pull offs. You know, that sort yeah. of thing. And, uh... You know, yeah, and that's using beautiful. many fingers and yeah. stuff. So I'm not actually picking up and down very fast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, you know, like I said, that's that's something I'm working on. So yeah. No, it all depends fantastic. on what you spend your time on. No, I like questions yeah. like that because it, it helps. I think it will help other people, too, to know that, you know, again, it's real simple. Whatever you're focusing on is what you're going to get good at. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. You can not like it. You can like it. But that's all it, that's all it comes down to. I say this all the time that since I started teaching online, I don't practice as much as I used to because mm -hmm. I'm doing stuff like building outlines and yeah. videos and uh, dealing with equipment and, yeah. and all the yeah. rest. And it's like, and sometimes that hurts my heart because I came into this because I wanted to play, uh, but I also like helping people. So I'm in this place where I'm like, I want to become a better guitar player, but I want to help people. Ah, and this is constant tug, you know? So I definitely, so that's why I wake up at 4 a.m. So I could practice the guitar because there'd be no other time to do it it's like the, the wife and the kids asleep and i can actually practice during that time and get get a little bit in you know um how do you remember how do you get good at remembering complex songs without relying on looking at the guitar tab whilst playing mm. well if you learn how to play a complex song you have spent so many hours with that song that you can't help but remember it mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. that's honestly the truth about it yeah um, I will say when you're learning with tabs versus learning with um, learning by ear, there's a different thing that's happening. I'm not sure what it is, but I've noticed that people that, that learn by tabs, and there's nothing wrong with tabs, mm -hmm. they usually have to go back to tabs to remember it mm -hmm. because they're not learning it by ear and they're not relying on other things. So what I would suggest doing for songs it's like that... It's a great that, bit right there. Yeah. What I would suggest is like try and learn it by ear. Even if it takes you twice as much time, you're like, well, mm -hmm. that's not as efficient. Mm -hmm. But you're, it's going to become faster yes. um, at, with time. Uh, Maybe slower at the beginning. And let's say, okay, well, I can't figure out that, that weird... I can't figure out that shape. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just by watching them and, and listening, I can't figure it out. Well, mm -hmm. then go to the tab mm -hmm. and learn that shape. Then go back to the video. Exactly. And also, yeah. what, what you mean by I can't learn that is what you mean, actually. And it's really important. The words are... And, and mm -hmm. to be explicit about what we're saying and know what it is we're saying is very important because what you mean by I can't do that means I don't have the patience to wait to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because what I find is that exactly what you're talking about here is that... Like if I need to learn a song for a video or something, it's just time. I just, I got to do yeah. it. Then I'm going to watch the guy live. I'm going to do the tabs and everything else. But if I have the time to do it, I will typically sit there and do everything by ear first. Yes. And it will take me longer, but yes. there's so much reward in that when you start finding it by yourself. Because yeah. this is what I say, you've got the same ears that you had as a kid, right? So you're hearing everything the same way. I, I compared it the other day to a child who's never seen or heard an elephant. If they hear an elephant, they're going to be like, what was that? Right. Yeah. But once you know the, the timber of that sound of what an elephant that should sound like, then once you hear it, you can identify it. Okay. And it has nothing to do yeah. with hearing differently. It has to do with your brain having no, know what a elephant sounds like or yeah. what a, a G sounds like yep. compared to a D or a, yep. a double stop or something exactly. like that, right? Exactly. It's the ear training is key. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay. Let's do just a couple more and then will you uh, take us out with yeah. the tune? Yeah. Okay. So let's get, get just a few more here. And, um, okay. We did answer the other one about how to arrange a finger style or a finger style version of a song, Ali. 
So um, just check out earlier in the show. I feel like I know the guitar, but I don't know music. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm. sure. Uh, you know, if you feel like you, 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 you're playing riffs and stuff like that, but uh, World of Hecky, I would say delve into a little bit of theory. I've got that whole free course for you that gets you introduced to it, that gets you the stuff that you need to know, like the major scale. The major scale is king. It rules everything. And um, so check that out. There's the the URL for you, or you can find that in the description of the video on Facebook or YouTube, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Um, okay, for Eric, we need to practice with Eric during uh, during the month so we can make sure Eric gets his fretboard time in. It's it's true. I, I really need to. It's, yeah. Um, and there was somebody, somebody asked, do you know uh, Never Going Back Again? Do you know that tune by um, Lindsey Buckingham? I, I'm not sure if okay. I do. That's I probably a, heard it. That's yeah, a cool but, tune. I'd slaughter yeah. it if I tried to play it. I, I did it the other night, but I, oh, yeah, cool. I'd slaughter it. But that's a cool tune. You yeah. dig it. That's, yeah. People ask that for that tune all the time. I should look that up. Um, oh, thank you so much, uh, Jeff, for the kind words there. And hey, I was, gonna, I was actually, yeah. that made me think of something. Yeah. That shows you like how much I'm in a different world sometimes. Yeah. I feel so weird. You know, people are like, oh, you don't know that song? It plays on the radio all the time. But... I'm spending my time elsewhere. You know, it's that's where you spend your time, right. and, and uh, yeah. you can only spend your time in so many places. Well, that's a that's a tune from, uh, I guess, early '80s, late '70s, something gotcha. like that. Yeah. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, Lindsey Buckingham, gotcha. and it's it, it's a Travis picking tune. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's yeah. quite complex. I mean, there's a lot going on with it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's just yeah. interesting how you get into your worlds, you know, yeah, and, and I, you don't leave them. <laughs> I do the same thing, and it's embarrassing for a guitar teacher because people assume, oh, you're a guitar teacher, well, then play Eruption and play yeah. uh, what <laughs> play this, and then you ought to know this, this, this guy, yeah. and you're like, no, like yeah, um, I'm creating is what I'm doing. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm doing my own thing. I'm not just like worried about all these other guitar players. But um, ever use acrylic nails? We answered that one. No, 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 not yet. girly. I'm joking. There, <laughs> we've got lots of friends that that, that use I know, a lot I know of a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah, and they work. They get the job done. Yeah, and they're probably more consistent, to be honest. You no know? joke. It, there's yeah. a little place down the road, a uh, bunch of little Vietnamese ladies. That's okay, totally PC because they are really truly Vietnamese. And uh, and and I go in there and I and I'm just like, what am I doing in here? And it's just like had this had that smell like yeah. I was gonna die. And I just was I didn't go through with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like I'm just That's looking. Amazing. I'm just yeah. looking. Uh, okay, I have problems with my my left pinky. It has almost no feeling in it. I need an affordable acoustic that plays easy. Can you um, recommend yeah. an acoustic? Yeah. Um, any acoustic can play easy. Well, I say any. Mm -hmm. I think any new acoustic should be able to play easy if you get it set up properly. Yeah. And if you get the action low, there's a, a balance between the the truss rod, which is what causes the neck to bend one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and the height of your saddle. So if you can find the balance and make it really low, then any guitar can play easy. But if you're looking for like affordable guitars, I mean, acoustically, I've played some awesome Yamahas at, uh -huh. at Guitar Center. I know that's not like a, you know, like... I've never think. owned a Yamaha that was not yeah. amazing. Well, the thing is... Or any piece of yeah. Yamaha equipment. They were, they're all r like really good yeah. for the money, especially. Yeah. I was going to say, I think they're, they're really, really cheap guitars. I mm -hmm. mean, like 100, 200... 50, that sort yeah. of range, mm -hmm. are better than some of the other brands' really, really cheap guitars, yeah. if that makes any sense. I yeah. mean, if you get past 500, then okay, you go over to a different brand maybe. But right. um, for that price guitar, yeah. they sound pretty good acoustically. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. you know, maybe put your own pickup in it if you want to do that, but yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. All right, hey, a few things before we go out. Colin's going to play a, a tune for us here in just a moment, but a few things I want you to know about. First off, we're going to be putting Colin's uh, credentials online here again so you, that you can see uh, more of him, okay? Check him out, colinhillguitar.com. Just check out his website. You can get to all his stuff there. Uh, Colin Hill Guitar on Instagram, Colin Hill Guitar on Facebook, right? Yeah. And he's on Spotify, yeah. iTunes, all the places where you can hear music. Mm -hmm. And um, also, we have a post on Facebook and Instagram. Here it is. There's Colin's mug, and um, and here's what you got to do: you got to like, you got to follow, and leave some sort of message. And by doing so, and this is the easiest way to win, friends. I'm giving away a over $500 course 
just for doing this, okay? So we're gonna pick one winner from there today. We will announce it tomorrow on stories, on Instagram stories. But Eric, I'm not tech savvy. Get tech savvy or then don't apply and, and try to uh, win a $500 course for free. How about that, okay? Coolio, all right. Um, I think that's it. Colin, thank you so much for being thank here, you bro. So much. Uh, excellent player, great oh, guy, you. great teacher. Thank you. It's like you, you were able to explain things really well, so love it. Everybody say thank you to Colin. Let him know that you love him, and please go visit his page, go visit his stuff, uh, amazing dude, and yeah, will you play us on out? Absolutely. Awesome, love it, thanks. Thank you. That's awesome.